Windcamp seems to think of almost everything, and that's what I like about them. And then they kind of miss just a little teeny tiny bit here and there. This is the Windcamp desktop stand, the Windcamp battery, the Windcamp charge hatch, and the Windcamp ADP-1. And this will do a lot of stuff to make improvements on your Yaesu FT817 or Yaesu FT818 radio, which I happen to have right here. So let's let's get to the pros and cons of all of these things, and then we'll do some battery testing. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on in this video. This battery here is a lithium polymer battery, and it replaces the battery that comes with the radio on the inside. So I've conveniently removed the interior hatch to save us some time. And you can take this battery and plug it directly in, if I can get the cord out, and plug it directly into the radio and be good to go. No problem there. But they, they took this idea and they made it even better. And that's what I like about some of the things that Windcamp does. So I can put this battery in the radio, no problem. And it fits and it's 3000 milliamp hours. And we'll see how long this will last in the radio because I'm doing a bunch of battery testing. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with all the battery testing that we're doing on this. But it becomes a little bit more gold when they add this charge hatch to it. So I take this guy here, the 3000 milliamp hour battery, and I plug it in where it says battery. Right. They even got the labeling right. And these are tiny connectors, so they're just a little tiny bit fiddly. Especially if you're trying to put them in upside down. They only go in one way, no problem there. And then you take this one here, and you made it up with this here. And this is kind of a, a one-and-done scenario. Once you've done this, you don't really have to do it again, unless this battery goes dead and you're in the middle of a, a field exercise and you need to hot swap batteries or whatnot. And then all of this just kind of fits nice and neat and snug inside of the battery tray area. Like it was meant to be there in the first place. And if you have the, the rubber feet that come with the radio, then it doesn't, it doesn't wobble. I don't have those rubber feet installed here and there's reasons for that. And it's perfectly, perfectly fine. It comes with a battery charger. This is output 12.6 volts, 2.0 amps, which is plenty to charge this. It will run while it's charging. Let's double check that uh, in a second here. But also one of the problems that this radio has is that it will just deplete the battery just in storage. So they've added this on off switch. This is, this is fantastic. So we've got a battery that fits the internal space for the battery and provides a better battery technology and rechargeable and yada, yada, yada. No memory effect, etc. Fantastic. It's got this on-off switch. There's enough room for the actual charging circuit to fit in there. This is just a dumb power supply. And it, it does the thing. It's, it's near perfect. When you have it set up, it doesn't, doesn't sit right. So let's turn this battery on, which will provide power to the radio. And the radio is now on. And it is plugged in and the charger is charging. So there you go. I wouldn't recommend that you try and charge it while you're trying to radio, but emergencies emergencies dictate your needs. So let's turn this back off because we've got more to take care of here. Unplug this, turn this battery off to save it. And the next thing that Windcamp offers is this stand. And this stand is actually pretty neat. It's a little piece of bent acrylic. It's not, it's not special in and of itself, except for the fact that it, it does the job very well that it is designed to do. Almost, almost. Don't look at my modification yet. We'll get to that in a second. So we put this on the stand, and now this radio is at a nice, pleasant viewing angle. It's it's secured on the stand itself. I can I can operate with it at a decent, you know, angle. Everything's everything's fantastic. But wait, there's more. I can actually reach in and operate my charge switch, and I can plug in my power cord, and I can now sit this thing on my desk, and it doesn't wobble anymore. Like they. They thought this through. This this actually works out really well. And if you're going to have this thing in your shack and you're going to do the kind of things that this radio can do, which quite frankly is a lot of things, this is going to be a very nice addition for you. You can power the radio. You can charge the battery. You can make contacts. Because it's the internal battery, you're limited to two and a half watts. So keep that in mind when you're thinking through this scenario. But other than that, it's fantastic. So let's unplug this and get this out of the way, because we've got another Windcamp product to show you, like we talked about in the intro, and that is the Anderson Power Pole adapter. Everybody loves power poles. These are the thing in this world. I do not see the little A, so these, 
may not be official Anderson power poles. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, but Outside of that, it's a it's a quality piece of, of kit. It's a I don't know if it's metal or you know aluminum or if it's plastic, but it feels it feels really good. It could it could be aluminum, and it's you can you can get these things uh, 3D printed and, and deal with it that way. Um, make your own, no no problems there. But they make this thing, and if you don't have a 3D printer and don't want to buy a 3D printer just for this thing, then you're all set, and you know we're going to take it apart. That's what we do here. Yep, that's got to be aluminum. Yep, that's aluminum. And fairly straightforward design. It's a PCB. You've got a couple of right angle PCB mounts. These don't look like the official Anderson PCB mount devices. Those spoons are a little bit bigger. The DC barrel jack is soldered directly onto the board. It it works. It it does the thing, as I as I like to say. And it's a you know, with that being a piece of solid aluminum that's been milled out, it's going to be pretty strong for you. Let's get it back together. There's a little groove on the side of your power poles, and there's even a groove in the case to hold the power poles in. So there's there's some strength to it. it it's, a, it's a quality piece of gear. And most of the stuff that Wincamp makes, well, all of the stuff that Wincamp makes, I will, I will say that 100% true. Everything that I have ever purchased from Wincamp has exceeded my expectations. Where Wincamp lets me down is the compatibility of their products, and we'll, we'll show you that in just a second. You guys saw that modification earlier. All right, all set there. We need to look on the back of our fantastic radio here and remove this ground screw because that's what holds the ADP-1, the Anderson Power Pole 1 adapter on. So it just slides right in, and it kind of steals your ground screw. So you're going to have to, you know, understand what you're getting into if you're the kind of person that uses ground screws on your radio for grounding purposes. You ain't doing that anymore with this, but that's okay. Now, back to the stand. If you notice, I, I carved this out. I carved this out of the way here because this is full flush with the bottom of the radio. And if I had not carved it away, it would sit forward there. And then if we look underneath, I can no longer plug in my power connector to charge my battery. So I did have to make that modification. And now it sits back just fine and I can see all the things I need to see and do all the things I need to do. And I can even use my power poles to get the full six watts out of this radio that this demanding modern world needs. So overall, fantastic product. There'll be links in the description down below for all of this stuff. But where we're going next, I'm sure you all are interested to see this, is we're gonna do a burn down test on this battery and see how long it lasts. So let's get to it. Battle station set up. We've got the Dell laptop. We've got the radio. We just finished doing a charge. Let's make sure our battery discharge switch is on and then we can lower the radio down and let's turn it on. This is the Wincamp 3000 milliamp hour battery on the internal. We've got 12.2 volts showing. Let's see if we are properly hooked up here. Tune. Tune. All right, she is tuning with a high SWR, now with a low SWR, and it is 12.03 on the clock. Let's start doing some testing. We'll be back with more updates as the battery churns away. All right, and we're dark. Hang on a second, let me turn this fan off. All right, so I was looking at the notes from yesterday's test. Two minutes, 34 seconds on the EBL lithium batteries and today we got that wind camp battery in there and i just wrote at the bottom two minutes 30 seconds because we started at 1203 so i was thinking like 230 is when we're gonna stop no 233 and she's dark let's go check some contacts see what we got this is all the contacts we had today and let's do a count 21 we had 22 contacts the other day so fairly fair i like it this has very similar results to the EBL batteries that we did the video on before, these uh, 3000 milliamp hour non-rechargeable uh, lithium batteries. These, these did very well. I started at 12.03 and 2.33 p.m. is very close to when I noticed that the power went out on the radio. We made 21 contacts. Here's what the map looks like of all of those contacts. The power distribution, because I, I had a very, very high expectation that these 3000 milliamp hour batteries and the Wincamp 3000 amp hour, 3000 milliamp hour battery would perform the same. I wasn't as on it taking notes because I kind of knew what it would look like. And the deviation of power seems a little more stable throughout the range. Like the Wincamp battery put out more power over the time period consistently 
than than these guys did. But regardless, these these produced two and a half watts of power output, and the Windcamp battery produced two and a half watts of power output. So either one, they both got the job done fantastically. 21 contacts. I made one contact less on the Windcamp battery. It's not the Windcamp battery's fault. I spent a bunch of time on 12 meters and 10 meters just calling CQ and not getting any answers. And then I moved to 20 meters and made a ton of contacts in a row. And I just stayed on 20 meters the whole way through. So highly recommend the battery. The battery did exactly what it was supposed to do. 20 some contacts in two and a half hours. And it, it did the thing, like I always say. Fantastic stuff. I'm going to be doing some more battery reviews on the channel. Stick around and check that out. There is a video right over here that's probably another battery review. And we will see you over there. Thanks for being awesome.